Good evening. Welcome to the PM service of the Northfield Church of Christ for Sunday, uh, July the 2nd. Uh, we will be singing a few songs observing the Lord's Supper, and I have a message for you that I hope will be enlightening and beneficial. We sing from songs of faith and praise here at Northfield, and so I will give you the number of the song and the name, just in case you don't have this book and you want to sing with us and you... Uh, uh, can find it, either Googling it or in, with the book that you have. The first song that we're going to sing is number 172, I Just Came to Praise the Lord. 172, I Just Came to Praise the Lord. <clears throat> I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to praise his holy name. I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to thank the Lord. I just came to thank the Lord. I just came to praise his holy name. I just came to thank the Lord. I just came to love the Lord. I just came to love the Lord. I just came to praise His holy name. I just came to love the Lord. The next song is number 700. And 63, O oh, Master, let me walk with thee. 763, O oh, Master, let me walk with thee. <clears throat> o oh, Master, let me walk with thee. In lonely paths of service free, tell me the secret, help me bear the strain of toil, the fret of care. Help me, the slow of heart, to move by some clear winning word of love. Teach me the way, would be to stay and guide them in the homeward way. In hope that sends a shining ray Far down the future's broadening way In peace that only Thou canst give With Thee, O Master, let me And the song before the Lord's Supper is O Sacred Head, uh, number 318. Three hundred and eighteen. O Sacred Head. 
O sacred head now wounded, with grief and shame weighed down, now scornfully surrounded, with thorns thine only crown. How art thy veil with anguish, with sore abuse and scorn? How does that visage languish, which once was bright as morn? What language shall I borrow to thank you, dearest friend, for this thy dying sorrow, my pity without end. Oh, make me thine forever, and should I fainting be. Lord, let me never, never outlive my love to come to this part of our evening worship where we observe the Lord's Supper. On the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and after uh, he blessed it and gave thanks for it, uh, they prayed. And after this, he took the cup and he explained what the bread was all about and what the cup was all about. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, the Apostle Paul uh, uses that same terminology to explain the Lord's Supper and uh, lays it out for us again. Uh, we are told uh, that on the first day of the week, Acts chapter 20 and verse 7, that uh, Christians gathered together to break bread. That breaking bread means that they came together on the first day of the week to observe the Lord's Supper. And so as we gather about the table, Let's think of the dying figure of Jesus Christ on the cross, taking the sins of the world with him there. Let's first pray for the bread. Our God and Heavenly Father, we are just so grateful that uh, your Son, our Savior, the Son of God and the Son of Man, was willing to come to earth in human form. With that, he was willing to take on the cross with the pain and the agony. He was willing to take on the cross, knowing the pain that there would be. And so as we partake of this bread, we remember his body, which was broken for us so that we might be saved. I pray that we will take it in a manner that you would see fit. We ask this prayer in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Let's give thanks for the fruit of the vine. We understand, dear Heavenly Father, that blood is that life-giving substance that flows through the body of human beings. This blood does everything to uh, allow human beings to stay, stay alive. And we just remember Jesus on the cross that blood flowing from his body, from his head and from his hands, from his feet, from his side. And we remember your words, what this blood is for each of us, that this blood is the New Testament of our salvation, and that through this blood, we have forgiveness of our sins. Bless us as we partake of it. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen.
And though it's not part of the Lord's Supper, we are also instructed to do something else on the first day of the week. We are called to lay by and store that with which we have been blessed. In the Old Testament, uh, the Old Testament figures were called upon to tithe. They were, uh, the 10% the rule was in effect in those days. And uh, some people think that this tithing uh, comes down to the New Testament. But New Testament teaching is different. New Testament teaching talks about cheerful givers. It talks about giving as we have been prospered. It talks about laying aside in store on the first day of the week and giving back to the Lord. And so we take this time to remember uh, that we are to give back to the Lord. And just as the Macedonians did, as Paul talked about, before they gave back, they gave of themselves. Let's pray for the giving at this time. Our God and Heavenly Father was just so grateful that uh, we have the uh, opportunity to give. We remember that widow, Mark, uh, that uh, gave those two small coins. We remember that she gave not out of her surplus, but she gave out of what she had. Help us to be those kind of givers. Help us indeed to, to uh, as we lay by in store, to remember what God has done for us and remember the mission of the church for which these monies are spent. Be with those that use these monies so that the word can be spread and those in need can be helped. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And the last song we're going to sing is a favorite of mine. It is 359, I Love the Lord. We will sing the three verses and then we will sing the chorus at the end. The three verses and then the chorus at the end. I love the Lord. <clears throat> I love the Lord, for he died my soul to save. On Calvary, his dear life he freely gave. From realms above, Jesus freely came to die, that I might live someday with him on high. I love the Lord, for he saved the lost from sin. He gave them life to be whole and free again. To live on high, with him never more to die. Oh, praise his name, we'll see him by and by. I love the Lord, for his love so full and free. He taught us why, that our love like his should be. To be like him and compassion freely give. Oh, bless his name, we then with him could live. I love the Lord, he has been so good to me. He gave me his life from sin to set me free. No greater love than his could ever be. I love the Lord because he first loved me. I hope all of you were able to sing uh, with us. Uh, praising the Lord is such a uh, wonderful uh, time that we have. I think it uh, does our own souls good, and I know the Lord requires that we praise him as our God and as our creator. If you were there this morning, uh, hopefully you remember that I told you that the evening service would be about God's divine nature. 
All right, God's divine nature. The Greek language in the New Testament, first I will go on record, and I've said this before, I'll say it many times, I am not a Greek scholar. I know a few Greek words, and I know what they mean, but I don't know all of the, uh, the nuances, obviously, of the Greek language. Uh, the New Testament was written in Greek and contains so many great insights, which are sometimes lost when translation happens. There is an English word called the Godhead, all right, the Godhead. And it is translated as one of these uh, examples. The word Godhead is found three times in the New Testament. It is found in Acts chapter 17, verse 29. And if you want to look these up and check me out, be a Berean, please help yourself. Acts chapter 17, verse 29, Romans chapter 1, verse 20, and Colossians chapter 2, verse 9. Uh, that's in the old King James. In the new King, King James, uh, it does not use this word in that middle scripture in Acts 17, 29. So if you search there in a uh, version other than the old King James, you will not find this term, Godhead. And so uh, we're going to learn a little Greek today. And I'm going to share with you two Greek words. The Greek words have to do with the Godhead. All right. Now, it, uh, I think most of you know that Theos, T-H-E-O-S, refers to God. It's the root word of theology, all right? And so Theos has to do with God. Now, there are two words in our New Testament that have to do with Theos. One is Theotes. And if you have a pen or a pencil, theotes is T-H-E-O-T-E-S. Theotes. The other word is theotes or theotes. There's one little I in that word that makes it different from theotes. T H E I O T E S. Theotes is from the adjective theote, uh, theo, theos, and it refers to the characteristics of deity. All right. I hope I'm not confusing you here. So remember, theotes, that first word, refers to the characteristics of God of deity. It comes from the noun theos. That noun means God. And it has to do with the essence of God, not just the characteristics of God. And so, with that in mind, let's examine the words and see uh, if uh, this lesson can help us out a little bit. First, Christ is theotes. T-H-E-O-T-E-S. That means Christ is God. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 9, Paul writes, For in him all the fullness of deity, Godhead, Theotes, dwells in bodily form. Now, Here's what is so fascinating and wonderful about Jesus Christ. Christ not only had all the characteristics of God, but that he was God. Jesus was as much God as God the Father. He's not inferior to God the Father. Now, the Apostle John makes this crystal clear 
in John chapter 1, verse 1. And most of you know this passage. It's the very beginning of the Gospel of John that says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The Word is Jesus Christ. The Word, it says, was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. However, the Word, Jesus, God, became flesh and dwelt among us. Therefore, the religious groups out there, and I'm not here to tap dance on other religious groups, but some of them are so far-fetched in their teaching. Uh, two of them, for example, are the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormons are very wrong when they say Christ was a created being and not equal to God. We must be careful of that because John says crystal clear in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Christ was there in the beginning and he is God. So we must be careful not to make the son of God inferior to God the father. And so you got that? God is deity and Jesus is deity. Where does that leave us? That leaves us as theiotes, T-H-E-I-O-T-E-S. We can never be theotes. We can never be deity. You know that old saying, there's two, there are two things that I am crystal clear about. There is a God and I'm not him. Uh, that, that just rings so true with me and applies, uh, so directly to this lesson this evening. You and I can never be theotes. We can never be the deity, the essence of God, but we can and we should be theotes. Now, what am I talking about? Well, let's go to 2 Peter uh, chapter 1, verse 4. It says, For by these, and Peter is talking about these facts, about knowledge, he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises in order that by them you might become partakers of divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. That's 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. Check that one out. Now, again, where does that leave us as Christians, as theotes? At this point, one may think of any number of characteristics that God has that Christians ought to manifest. And by the way, as we take on some of these characteristics, as these are added to our lives, we become more, get this, godly. We don't become God, we become godly. We hopefully take on the nature of God and the nature of Jesus Christ. We become more godlike, but we do not become deity. Remember, when man was created, the Bible tells us that we are created in the image, that spiritual image of God. The Holy Spirit, through the Apostle Paul, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1, says, Be imitators of God as my beloved children. Imitate the characteristics of God. 
Now, the Bible is our guidance book. The Bible tells us, you shall know the truth, and it's the truth that will make you free. To the Samaritan woman, he talked about uh, his words being as living water, not the water that came up out of the well. Now, this can happen only when we look at Jesus as theotes, as we look at Jesus as deity. <coughs> only then can we come become theotes. Only then can, as Christians, we become godlike in nature. And so the Apostle Paul could write in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, Be imitators of me, just as I am of Christ. The Apostle Paul was trying to imitate Christ's characteristics. And Peter took this, I think, one important step farther. He says, For you have been called for this purpose, since Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example for you to follow in his steps. Peter was, re was writing to people knowing that, especially in the first century, that people would suffer for their beliefs. We sometimes, uh, not as overtly, but we at times suffer for our beliefs too. And so Peter not only writes that to the first, Corinthian, first century Christians, but he writes it to you and I as Christians in 2023. And so we can accomplish the goal of uh, being like Jesus, being theotes, being deity, and becoming theotes by imitating the characteristics of those in the New Testament who have gone before us. You remember uh, when uh, Peter preached that sermon on the day of Pentecost in the second chapter of Acts, and 3,000 people were added. If we read further, it says uh, they met constantly and they adhered to the apostolic teachings which when we follow the word of God, we do exactly. We follow apostolic teachings. So with that, as we complete this lesson, let's remember that Christ is fully God. He is fully Theotes. We can't be that, but all of us can take on the nature and the spirit of God and Christ. Yes, there is a God, and I'm not God. However, we can use God and Jesus as being divine and for us to want to take on as many of those characteristics of God and Jesus as we can. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could live up to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13, where Paul writes um, to a mature man, to the measure of the statue which belongs to the fullness of Christ. See, when Paul said, be imitators of me because I'm an imitator of Christ, he said that in it, 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 as a multifaceted term, it's important for us to be godly people. You know, Jesus said, you know, there are people who will uh, come to me with words, and then there are keep people who will come to me not just with words, but reflected by the things that they do. He told Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep. He said, there's doing that comes along with belief. 
And so this is a part of our nature and a part of which that we have to adhere to as Christians. And believe me, that should be our goal. Even though we are not theotes, even though we're not deity, we are theotes, theotes. we are followers of deity. And we're called upon to be as godlike as we possibly can be. I hope this message was enlightening, as enlightening for you as it was for me to prepare it and to share these thoughts with you. If you are here this evening and you have not accepted Jesus into your life, it will be very hard for you to be the theotates. It will be very hard for us to be imitators of Christ because we haven't taken Christ into our lives. And so if you haven't done that, the invitation is open to us this evening. If you have to take Jesus into your life, please do that tonight. We will assist you in any way possible. If you need uh, uh, that, just right away, give us a call. We will be at your beck and call. I hope this message was good for you. I hope it was enlightening and edifying. Let's pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, help us to understand your nature as God and the nature of your Son as Jesus, being the Word that was there at the beginning, being the Word that was deity. And as the Apostle Paul tells us to imitate him as he imitates Christ, help us to take Christ-like characteristics into our lives because I know that this is what you want us to be. This is who you want us to be. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, as we strain to be the God-like people that we should be. Be with us and help us, stand by us, keep us close to you. Help us to understand that the only way that we can uh, come to the day of judgment justified is becoming God-like in our lives. Continue to be with us, and I pray that this message is, uh, has been uh, good for each of us and that uh, we can take it into our hearts. Bless us and be with us. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe. May God bless you all. As far as the east is from the west.